Hello, uh, I'm Major Cody Cade with the 105th Military History Detachment. Today we're going to talk about food in the military since this week is uh, Thanksgiving. So underneath here we'll, we'll start uh, back in the Civil War, Spanish-American War, olden days, times. Uh, military rations were mostly just flour, sugar, salt, coffee, and a meat, mostly uh, like beef or salted pork, stuff like that, that the soldiers could then, in the field, turn into like hardtack or biscuits or maybe warm it up over a fire or just take a bite off of it and eat it cold uh, type stuff. And that went all the way through the Spanish-American War, so 1890s or so. It wasn't really until like World War I where we see a transition to more containerized canned rations for the guys in the trenches because it was just hot, wet, cold, wet, wet, miserable all the time in the trenches. Food, fresh food, spoiled quite a bit. So more stews and soups and things of that nature uh, were pretty common during World War I. World War II, the Army really made a shift in between the interwar period to go to a ration that was more compact for an individual. So that's where we see the K rations. So, bon appetit. This is the Army's first attempt at making a standard ration that would support a soldier for a meal. So, there's two different types of K ration boxes during World War II. This is the second type that we're gonna talk about. And they're pretty cool. They're color coded, so blue is for dinner, Green is for supper here, so that's a supper K-ration. And then breakfast K-ration came in a brown box. And on the back of each of these, it shows you what came in here. So in the breakfast one, there was meat and eggs. And then there's also assorted biscuits, coffee, fruit bar, chewing gum, sugar, and cigarettes to keep you going through your tough rigors of war. And each of these outer boxes were just cardboard, but then the inner boxes here were color or coded B, S, and D, breakfast, supper, dinner, and they were waxed. So this was a, an attempt to keep them dry. So this one's empty, but that one's an original waxed World War II. So typically the cans of meat after 75 years, they've all ex exploded or degraded enough that we don't have any surviving examples, but we do have a surviving confectionery packet. So this little packet here is in a cellophane wrapper, and it's got your crackers, your chewing gum, cigarettes, and then a bouillon powder in this one. So this probably came out of a supper or dinner one, not a breakfast one. But that's what they would have had as like part two of their meal. Sometimes you're lucky, you also got a sweet chocolate ration bar. So this is just sweet and chocolate, just in a bar, and you just kind of broke off a chunk or cracked off a chunk. Sometimes you could shave it, melt it down in your canteen cup, make a little like chocolate water, hot cocoa deal with it. You also had cigarettes, so there's different types. These are Rowley cigarettes, this is an original World War II pack. There's also some Chesterfields and Lucky Strikes were pretty popular back in the day. And then also some chewing gum. So this is a original beech nut chewing gum from World War II, and they had a couple sticks of chewing gum in each of the rations. So that was your early World War II. Later World War II, we start seeing sea rations. So World War II sea rations were just in this gold can, and you had to take this key here that was on the bottom of the can and stick it through this little foil, this metal loop here, and spin off the top of the can and out came your biscuits, confectionery, so biscuits, probably some more bouillon powder or chewing gum, stuff like that, was in the B, B unit of the World War II C rations, which then there was also an A unit, which had your, your meat in it, you know, mostly pulled, like pork, uh, there's a chicken, uh, like there's a ham and eggs one, some other stuff. I was told by a lot of World War II vets that they weren't the best, but it kept you going. These were small. You could take them and put them in the back of your uniform above your cartridge belt, put two or three of them back there, and then carry your rations with you. 
Same thing with the canned ones. You could easily throw them in a pocket or a pouch of some sort, carry them with you. So that's your World War II K rations and C rations. So now we fast forward, enter Korea, Vietnam. So we start making rations smaller, more durable. Those the K rations World War II didn't last a lot. You know, they cans would burst, the weevils would get in there, the cell phone would rip, stuff like that. So they, they were a good step forward compared to what we had. But now we enter the K ration or C rations of like Vietnam. So it, each of them came in a little cardboard box like this. You could use to start a fire, you address it as a postcard. A lot of Vietnam guys did stuff like that. But inside there's a whole meal. So this was designed to last one soldier for a meal. So you'd, you'd be lucky if you got two, maybe three of these a day. So let's take a peek inside. So inside you would get your nifty little plastic spoon. So this is where we start seeing plastic spoons used. World War II they had a, a wooden tongue depressor type spoon where the post-World War ones we see individually wrapped plastic spoons. And then you'd get your main meal. So this is an original can here. This is pork slices with juices. There's different ones. There's a, like a bean and wieners one, uh, spaghetti and meatballs. We start seeing a wide variety or much more variety of the meat products post-World War. There's a jar or tin of peanut butter. It's pretty cool. Then you see your dessert. This one's got delicious pound cake in it. And then you start seeing your different units. So this was a B2 unit. So this had like your crackers and stuff in it. But we also have a continuation of the cigarettes. So World War II started with the cigarettes. 1950s and 60s, we still see the cigarettes. So we've got some surviving examples here of Marlboro's, Benson and Hedges, Lucky Strikes, Paul Malls. And then there's also like some Newports, Chesterfields and stuff like that as well. So we up the variety of that. Then inside there would be an accessory packet too. So this is where we start seeing the introduction of more pre-packaged accessories. So inside here there's a thing of packaged instant coffee, a thing of sugar, a thing of creamer substitute, uh, a thing of matches so you can start a fire or light your smokes. A thing of toilet paper, which is pretty handy to have. Uh, typically like a P38, so this is a can opener, it's still in its package, so you can open your cans of food. Very handy to have. A lot of guys would take them out of the package, wear them around their dog tags or identification tags, just so they wouldn't lose it in the field. There's also a nifty Stimident toothpick, so this is just a, a toothpick here to clean your teeth or help clean your teeth. and then. Chiclets, so the iconic chiclets in chewing gum. So there's a couple different types. There's a, a peppermint one, a spearmint one, and then it's just kind of like a plain little chiclets in a clear package. So, but that was your basic Vietnam up through the late 80s, early 90s uh, type of K ra or C ration, excuse me. Then inner desert storm, that's when we start seeing the MREs. So the original MREs were this like dark brown color here of, pack, of packaging. Uh, unfortunately, we don't really have any examples that are complete of the dark uh, brown package MREs. If you know somebody's got them, feel free to pass our contact information along. But currently, this is what the current issue MREs look like. Nice little brown wrapper, durable, and this is one meal for one individual. So it's got enough survival calories where you can eat one MRE a day and still survive theoretically if you have to. So this one is menu number 17 pork sausage patty maple flavor. That one's not horrible. This one over here that's open is the hash browns with bacon, potatoes, and onions. So inside the current one there's a dessert. So here's an apple turnover that comes in this one. There's a package of dehydrated like granola mix which is pretty tasty so this one's got milk and blueberries in it so you just add a little water and, and chew that down 
It's got some dry roasted peanuts to help with your salt intake. It's got the coveted Emery crackers along with the highly popular cheese spread. Not just cheese spread with jalapenos, unfortunately. Also has a plastic spoon and a wrapper that you can reuse for stuff. And then it's got the hash browns in onions, potatoes, and bacon in a pouch that you can use your nifty little army issue military heater with the rock or something to slide into this paper, this cardboard wrapper, and then this will heat up over time and you can have a warm meal. It also has an accessory packet, which we don't have any cigarettes anymore because we're trying to be more health conscious and stuff like that. So instead we've got toilet, the same toilet paper, got some salt, some matches, chiclets, a little thing of Tabasco sauce, some coffee and sugar, and like a wet wipe typically are in the current accessory packets. So we've gone a, we've gone a long ways in the course of 100 years going from eating embalmed beef like they did in the Spanish American War with some hard tack and coffee and sugar if we were lucky to the K rations which were a good step forward to the C rations which were pretty darn good considering we're in a jungle and they've lasted as long as they have and then the current issue MREs which are very they're good it's a good source of energy and good source of calories when you're fighting and if you eat them right while you're training it's pretty good too. So in conclusion, have a happy Thanksgiving, enjoy your turkey.